Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up on Roku in the sports section. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, you had a really interesting development take place in the cruiserweight division. <laughs> Uh, it still amazes me, but it intrigues me. Marco Huck is on the verge of taking down Johnny Nelson's record for the most successful title defenses in the cruiserweight division. Right? So, in an interview, Johnny Nelson, who still looks like he's in great shape and who is mentally tough, Understand, this guy started his career not 0-1 or 0-2. He actually started his career 0-3 and, and kept fighting. Then became a dominant cruiserweight champion. Understand, he left the sport with the belt. Understand, he did not lose over the last nine years of his career. Although, I will admit... I thought he lost his match against Guillermo Jones badly. The judges call that match a draw, right? Every fighter has one or two fights in his record where you're scratching your head over the scoring. But just know that Johnny Nelson was a dominant cruiserweight champion, right? You're seeing a lot of people from older generations looking relaxed and, you know, helping televise fights, right? Johnny Nelson is a boxing commentator, is a good one, and has been a good one for years. But just understand, when you see a Johnny Nelson or a Julio Cesar Chavez with a mic talking about a fight, uh, just understand that they used to be excellent fighters, right? Well, in this interview, Johnny Nelson was asked about Marco Huck. And Nelson incredibly said that he felt that if he were given six months to train, that he would beat Marco Huck. Nelson went further. Nelson said, look, you know, I'm not 100% these days, right? He doesn't believe he would have the hand speed that he did when he left the sport. In other words, Nelson's telling you he believes that if he were to fight the version of himself that left the sport after fighting his last fight, he's telling you today he would lose, Right? But he doesn't believe that he has to be that guy anymore to beat Marco Huck. Nelson believes that at 50%, he can beat Marco Huck. Now, you know what I like to say. <laughs> styles make fights. Before we talk about the styles, just understand that there is precedent. Henry Maskey. On November the 23rd, 1996, lost his IBF light heavyweight title to Virgil Hill. Right? He came back more than 10 years later. He fought a rematch against Virgil Hill on July the 3rd, 2007. And would you believe after more than 10 years away from the ring, Maskey won a unanimous decision. In fact, let's go further. If you look at the scoring in that fight, you're going to see that the closest scorecard had Maskey winning that fight by three rounds, right? The point I'm making is simply this. There actually is precedent for a fighter leaving the sport for a decade or more, coming back and simply having too many skills for his opponent right now here let me just say this right and I have the Guillermo Jones Johnny Nelson fight up in my favorites on my YouTube channel page and I have Marco Huck highlights up in the favorite section on my YouTube channel page I view Marco Huck as a bit flawed you notice that against Alexander Povetkin. Povetkin was ducking under his punches. Huck couldn't make the adjustment 
He doesn't throw good body shots. He just doesn't. He's primarily a head hunter, right? In my opinion, he doesn't know what to do when a guy gets inside and grapples with him, clinches a lot, ties him up, right? He also has a problem in facing a jab. You notice that from the Steve Cunningham fight. Cunningham beat Huck. You're going to notice Huck never figured out how to slip the jab, right? Huck also doesn't really bend at the waist enough. He doesn't know how to use a vertical game. For all of those reasons, I actually believe that Johnny Nelson would have a chance against Marco Huck if he's kept himself in shape and doesn't have to drain himself to make the 200-pound weight limit. Understand, during a huge portion of Nelson's career, the weight limit at Cruiser was 190. Understand, Nelson himself actually used to fight at heavyweight and had to drain himself to get down to 190 to fight at Cruiser. Right Later, in about 2003 or so, they increased the weight to 200 pounds in the Cruiser division. But just understand, if you're fighting Marco Huck, you know the angles at which the punches are coming from. He's a head hunter. His right hand is his best punch. But what he likes to do is he likes to follow you around the ring. It's a two-handed attack. Then he opens up. But he's sloppy about it. Right? He doesn't really time an entry point. Right? His fights tend to disintegrate into him coming in and just opening up windmill style with a two-handed attack up top, right? He's not a guy who hits you a lot with the left and then comes back with the right or who triples up on the right, then hits you with the left. It's more basic than that. It's one, two, one, two, one, two, right? If you research Marco Huck's past, you're going to find out that he used to be a kickboxer. He is an elite athlete. But I don't view him as a chess player. I view him as more of an athlete in boxing than I do, let's say, a boxer who happens to be athletic. Now, let me say this. Johnny Nelson's interesting. I don't believe Nelson bends either. Right? Nelson was a special athlete when he fought. But he fought stiff. He fought upright. He was trained by the same people who trained Nassim Hamed. He fights just like Hamed, only with less punching power. Right? But understand, with Marco Huck, you have a choice. If you know he's coming in at this angle, if you know he's a head hunter and he's hunting your head, you can either come in below it, Alexander Povetkin, crouching, Mike Tyson in his prime, crouching. Or you can come in above it, leaning back, Vitaly Klitschko style. That's who Johnny Nelson is. Johnny Nelson would come in and he'd be leaning. Right Now you know what would happen next. Huck likes to step in when you're not throwing punches back. Right? When he steps in, Nelson is superior in terms of clinching and holding. Also, Nelson is a master at hitting guys who are recklessly coming in. Nelson threw an excellent uppercut. Nelson had punching power. He would hit guys who were so unsuspecting that they would immediately crumble to the canvas. Right? Nelson has punching power. He has built-in leverage. He stands upright. He doesn't lean forward a lot. So it's a little bit jarring when you see the power he generates. I believe because Nelson would be able to lean away from a lot of Marco Huck shots, because Nelson is the kind of inventive guy who in fights would sometimes just lean on the ropes, literally bounce off the ropes, and then move around the ring. And because Nelson is mentally tough and 
despite one of the sport's better dispositions, is actually mean-spirited in the ring. Right? He's the kind of guy who likes to taunt opponents. If you don't believe me, go back and look at films. Right? Nelson was the kind of guy who seemed to emotionally enjoy knocking guys down. He has a mean streak. Right? You know, don't be fooled by the smile. Don't be fooled by the pleasant disposition. Don't be fooled by the interviewing skills where he interviews guys and he looks pleasant and he, you know, looks deferential. In the ring, Nelson was a meanie. He was a badass. Right? I think Nelson firmly believes he's better skilled than Marco Huck, who isn't that skilled. In other words, it'd be a little bit different. In terms of talking about Johan Hernandez, that's a different person. Johan Hernandez actually got, has some boxing skills, right? Here, we're talking about an athletic guy who really doesn't make adjustments. You're not going to see Marco Huck just, you know, jabbing, a, you know, throwing straight jabs to a guy's body, right? Ducking a shoulder and tucking body shots into combinations, that's not who he is. So I believe Nelson feels if he could just guard against <laughs> Huck at certain angles, because you know Huck's going to come in throwing punches up top. If he can just time a jab and throw it strategically, because you know Huck is too front foot heavy. And if he can land crisp shots as Huck comes in and clinch Huck, as older fighters have to, for stamina purposes, so he can go several rounds, I think that fight would be competitive. Right? Of course, all of this hinges on the idea that Johnny Nelson has been in the gym and has been keeping himself in shape. Keep in mind, Maskey came back a decade later against the guy who beat him. He was motivated. He knew the style. Here, Nelson would be coming back against the guy he's never fought. Right? I think that fight's intriguing. I'll just put it to you that way. Right? Let's just say I believe that fight would be competitive. Right? I think Nelson is the better boxer, skill-wise, than Huck. But Nelson would have to have the kind of intensive training camp where he gets back his timing. With the proper timing, given the skills Nelson had, right, a pretty good jab, right, the ability to stand upright and get leverage on punches, the ability to back away from punches, the ability to clinch. I could see Nelson giving Huck one hell of a hard time. And understand, of course, if Nelson were to win, Lord knows you have other older fighters out there. Tarver, Hopkins, right, from Nelson's era, who would be intriguing opponents, right? You also have some young lions out there. I'm not saying Nelson comes back to stick around, but I will say this. This is boxing. He wouldn't be the first guy to tell us, hey, I'm just fighting this one fight. Like Bernard Hopkins told us when he jumped to light heavyweight to fight Tarver, who then decided after some success to stick around and see how far he could ride the wave. But please, I hope boxing doesn't laugh at Johnny Nelson for threatening to come back. Because I believe Marco Huck would be the perfect opponent for him to come back against. Right? Food for thought. You know, Huck isn't that advanced a fighter, quite frankly. An older fighter with some boxing skills could diffuse his athleticism. Didn't Huck look bad in the last round of that Steve Cunningham fight? Right? Weren't you amazed that with Povetkin continually, you know, ducking his head against Huck, that Huck didn't duck down? Didn't Huck have a chance at the heavyweight title in that fight, and didn't he let it slip away? 
right? I'm privately going to hope, especially since guys like Farad Arslan are still fighting at Cruiser, I'm privately going to hope that Johnny Nelson does get the title shot against Marco Huck. I don't want to see Johnny fighting contenders and stuff like that, right? I believe when you've been a great champion and you're retired and stuff like that, you only come back for the big fights, right? If you need to tune up against contenders, do it the custom auto way, in the gym, away from the public, right? But if Marco Huck is willing to give us an intriguing fight, against the other man with as many title defenses at Cruiser as him. I think it'd be great theater. I'd be interested in that fight. You know, let me just say, I, I would think the fight would be competitive. I would give Johnny Nelson a chance. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.